Welcome to a tutorial on the A085 microprocessor and uh, in this uh, tutorial we're going to discuss about the 8255A programmable peripheral interfacing chip. Okay, so you can see an image on my left, okay? Now this is the pin diagram of the 8255 PPI chip, okay? So now, uh, well, the, as the name here suggests, well, programmable peripheral interface chip. Now before going on to uh, its details, let me just tell you that well, this particular chip, that's the 8255A, is basically well manufactured by Intel, okay, and that it is basically a PPI chip, meaning programmable peripheral interfacing chip. All right, so it's a 40-pin device. All right, and uh, well, this is mainly used in order to increase the number of input output ports for 8085 microprocessor related applications okay now what do I mean by this statement over here okay so let's give you an example maybe this would be clear all right so think of uh, the 8085 microprocessor over here let's just uh, this okay my drawings off well I know that okay so let this uh, blue box over here, okay, that's the best I can get. Uh, let this blue box over here well, represent the 8085 microprocessor, okay? And imagine that we're basically, well, interfacing it with a external memory chip. Okay, let's take this one, the pink one, as the external memory chip. Okay. So this is our memory chip, right? So what we're doing here is basically what we're interfacing both of them so we know that the 8085 basically has what well, 16 address lines but taking uh, both the lower and the higher order address buses together so here 80 0 to 87 okay and over here where well, we have a8 till a15 so we require well, all the 16 lines in order to well, interface okay with the memory chip concerned. Uh, let's say we are m interfacing with, let's say, multiple memory chips, okay? So some of the lines from uh, the uh, higher address uh, lines will be just used in order to control some device and then we can, well, use them to interface with, well, maybe multiple memory chips concerned. But if we'd use all this 16 lines, okay, so we c what we can see here that the 8085 has only eight lines for data communication so it has only eight lines for data communication okay that is the lower order address data bus and on top of that it has only was 16 lines for address communication okay now apart from all these it doesn't have any other input output ports now let's say we wanted to use the 8085 microprocessor in building some kind of you know complex machinery complex applications where it needs to control or monitor a lot many number of um, input output devices so it would require more input output ports so it has only 16 lines okay out of which well only eight lines can uh, basically you know interchange or exchange data from either it can accept or you know supply data to peripheral devices. So we have only eight lines for data communication. So this is pretty much a problem. But what if we had one well, more uh, in number of input output ports? If the application becomes very complex and we need to, you know, monitor a lot many, uh, if the 8085 basically needs to uh, monitor um, in a particular application a lot many number of uh, input output devices or peripheral devices and in that case it requires more input output ports okay in order to uh, perform that many number I mean you know that much of data communication with that many number of devices okay if the application gets complex so if we use up well all the ports in basically in memory uh, communication I mean in basically interfacing the chip with a memory uh, a device okay then in that case we don't have any other ports remaining for uh, interfacing the microprocessor with the other input output devices so what do we do in that case well in that case 
the 8255A is the answer because with this chip we can well increase the number of input output ports depending upon the uh, complexity of the application so you can see here the 8255A is also a 40 pin chip similar to the 8055 I mean sorry there 8085 okay and well it has 24 okay it has 24 input output ports okay so we can basically increase the number of uh, input output ports a little bit okay so it has about 24 input output ports meaning that we can well connect or monitor or take input and output from uh, 24 different lines okay so it has basically three ports so all these 24 input output ports have been divided basically into three 8-bit ports I might write you know 8-bit ports so it has what three 8-bit ports or IO ports that will be better so those ports are basically named as A, B and C respectively well A has well eight ports okay so here, here we can see uh, if I just select a different color okay or rather, let's just take um, which one should I take? Okay, fine, this is good. So you can see over here that well, port A0 to A7, so that is pin numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then 40, 39, 38, and 37. So all these taken together, well, they form port A. So this is port A of the 8255A chip. Okay, so this just starts from well, port A. A7, uh, sorry there, port A0 to A7, so there are eight ports over here. Similarly, we have the port B, which, uh, well, ranges from that of port B0 to B7, and similarly, we have a uh, port C. Now, you can see over here that port B would basically range from, well, it has uh, pin numbers 18, 19, 20, then 21, and then through to 25. So this is basically a span of port B. There you go. And apart from that, well, we have another port that is port C. You can basically see over here that have well, pins 10 through to pin 17. Well, they make all the eight lines, okay, eight input output lines of port C. Now, well, basically port C is divided into two parts. All right, so it is basically divided into two parts. So one is the C upper, okay. Now the C upper, and and the other is of course the C lower. All right, so eight lines in the port C are divided into four lines each in C upper and C lower. Okay, now C upper would basically will contain the lines um, C. Uh, we have here C7, so it it basically basically you know contains the line C4 to C7, okay. While the C lower part of port C what contains the lines C0 to C3. So you can see over here that well pins 14, 15, 16, and 17 well port C0 to port C3. This one I'm just talking about. So this is basically C lower. Okay, and on the other hand, right over here, pins 13, I mean pins 10 to 13, that is port C7, 654, okay, so all they just make the C upper part. So basically, this is port C, well, divided into two parts. So I'm going to write here port C, there you go. Well, so this is basically a brief description of what the device is is all about all right and it's input output ports basically now apart from that we have well uh, some data input ports okay I'm sorry there it's not uh, well just input it's basically a bi-directional data port so it just ranges from that of pin 34 to 27 okay so this entire thing okay that is D0 through to D7 is basically the bi-directional okay so I'm just gonna write that down over here that this is basically the bi-directional data port okay and uh, well generally the uh, and this data port is connected 
to the 8085 microprocessors data bus, okay? That is a lower order address data bus I'm talking about over here. That is 80 uh, 0 through to 87, consisting of eight lines, okay? So they are just fed into the bidirectional data port, I mean, connected together with the bidirectional data port whenever we interface this 8255 chip with the 8085 microprocessor. Now, what we need to stress over here is that, well, the fact that this chip is programmable, okay? Now, the fact that, well, this chip is programmable, well, this is basically well brought out in the concept of the control register, okay? Now, what is basically the control register? Well, let me just elaborate. Well, this diagram, well, uh, gives us a little bit of idea. Well, the control register that we're talking about over here is, well, basically an 8-bit register, okay? It's basically an 8-bit register present inside the 8255 chip, okay? And, well, this is what makes this chip uh, programmable, meaning by changing the data bits, okay, by changing the co corresponding bits in each of the uh, in each of the register cells over here, well, we can, you know, control the input and output ports, okay? So we can, well, basically switch over from port A then to port B to port C. I mean, we can, well, control or use any of the uh, ports A, B, or C as, well, inputs and outputs together depending upon the application concerned. So we can use any of the ports, okay, depending upon our convenience or the applications and then use them as input and output ports uh, just like that. So in order to do that, basically, we need to provide a control word, okay, or more precisely, an 8-bit control word. So this control word is basically an 8-bit code, okay, which needs to be written into the control registers, okay, and the code present in the control register will, will determine that which of the ports in the 8255 chip is used as an input or as an output, whether it's port A, B, or C. And also, we can control the port C's upper and lower parts separately. So it's basically, uh, you know, a programmable chip depending upon the fact that, well, a control word stored in the control register basically, well, determines its operation depending upon which port we would use as an input or output depending upon the application concerned. And, well, I'll just give you an example. Um, let's say we want to control, well, port a. So then we will need to provide the necessary control word that determines the, uh, or rather that selects the port A, okay? And if we want to, well, make it as an output port, then we would write down or select that very uh, bit in the control registers, okay? That would just turn it, or rather help us use it as an input port. Right? So that is basically what well discussed in one of the later tutorials uh, where I'd be giving you the entire details of which uh, bit data present in which of the register cells selects the corresponding ports and, well, selects them as input or output, okay? So there are lots of modes over here and, well, lots of, uh, you know, ways in which you can use the corresponding ports. So I'll discuss that in a later tutorial. but. Over here, you can also see that the chip will also has certain other control pins, like for example, reset. Well, this is generally connected to the reset out pin of the 8085 microprocessor. And generally, if it needs to be reset, okay, then the microprocessor does it on its own, okay? Now, this reset pin in the 8085 is basically an output pin used to reset other preferably connected devices, okay? And this particular pin over here, that is the chip select, okay? So this is also referred to as the master 
chip select okay or uh, the master chip enable or write enable in this case makes it easier to understand so whenever we would provide a logic zero voltage level over here at pin number six that is CS bar this chip is enabled or selected and then you can well use the chip in whichever way you want to and the lines over here that is A1 and A0 they basically are connected to the AD1 okay and AD0 lines of the 8085 microprocessor after they just come out on from the other side of the LAT chip okay and they're used to uh, you know select certain modes over here I'll give you a table okay so here okay there we have it so now in this table you can basically see that as long as we have a logic zero voltage level on the chip select uh, pin of the 8255A chip till that moment we can well basically control the 8255A chip in whichever way we actually want to so if we'd have well a zero zero code on uh, the pins A1 and A0 then we are able to select port A okay now we can use a port A as either an input or an output okay similar is the case when we have a zero on port I mean uh, on the pin A1 and a logic one on pin A0 so it just goes on uh, something like a two bit binary code so zero zero port A if we have a zero one then port B is selected okay and if we'd have well one zero then we are able to select port C okay and then finally having one one on both A1 and A0 we are able to select the control register alright so with corresponding codes I mean using the corresponding code we can select whichever port we like to okay like for example if we want we can use port A B or C and if we'd want the uh, control word to be written in the control register then we first need to select the control register first so in that case we'd use 1 1 on both A1 and A0 pins okay and if the chip select line goes logic high then well the A1 and A0 just becomes well don't care conditions okay it doesn't even matter because 8255A is not selected under such a case so this is basically the control table okay so here I'm gonna write here this is basically the control table gives you an idea of what you need to do okay in a nutshell so apart from that we have well read and write lines over here so there you can see the read and the write bar lines now these are connected to the corresponding read and write lines on the 8085 chip and whenever we need to read data from any of the input output ports over here then the read bar signal or the uh, voltage level on the pin 5 that is read bar goes to logic 0 and on the other hand if we need to output some uh, you know data through any of the input output ports then we obviously provide a logic 0 voltage level or rather the 8085 provides a logic zero voltage level on the right bar pin that is pin number 36 okay and over here you can see that well pin number seven is basically the ground pin we just apply it to logic zero voltage level and on the other hand pin number 26 is just connected to plus five volts because it is the po positive power supply pin so that just summarizes or rather introduces us to the 8255A chip and well the function of each of its pins over here and gives us a brief introductory idea as to what the chip is all about and what its function is okay so with that we just come to the end of this tutorial and we're gonna see you next in the forthcoming one and where we'll be basically be entering into the details about its control. So till then, it's just going to be a short goodbye, and thanks for watching.